So we're gonna go around and look at the mamas and see where we're at, who's looks pregnant. I already have an idea, but we'll just check. Like for example, this lady here. If you look, she has a big old milk bag here, sorry. Mama, and she's very pregnant, so she's starting to swell. So she should be soon. This one had me worried yesterday because she was laying down, but she just probably was being lazy. She doesn't look like she's even pregnant, so that's good. Um, she looks like she could go soon. Well, she has a little more time. So what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the fullness of their bag. That's one way to kind of get an idea if they're ready to have a baby. Um, if it, if their bag really fills up in a day or two, with the, if their bag really fills up within a day or two, then they are probably ready to have a baby. Um, this is again, this is loose. It doesn't always mean it. I have some that won't actually have their bags filled until after the baby's born. So you kind of know your goats, and you can kind of tell who does and who doesn't do this. The other thing that you can, that really is probably the more accurate way, is what you're going to do is you take your fingers and you find the ligaments in their tail, and they have these like pencil thin ligaments. And normally, if you try to squeeze their tail, you can't. You can't really, it doesn't go very far, your fingers can't pinch very far, but if they're about to have a baby, then you can actually, on their tail, on their skin, you can actually kind of push your fingers and it's almost like you could touch your fingers <coughs> through the ligaments, you know, through the skin and feel your finger on the other side. So you're not actually wrapping around, but you're just squeezing that ligament and if it's loose enough, your fingers will feel like they're almost touching, um, even though there's fur and skin and everything in between so that would be one way and that's probably more accurate it's just like like humans are like when we are about to have babies our ligaments loosen up the relaxing kicks in and all that type of stuff happens and we loosen up so that's one of the more most accurate ways is just to squeeze that top of their tails and one other way to check is if they're acting weird um, sometimes if they're either super friendly or if they go off on their own and don't want to be around anyone um, that's another sign that you want to keep an eye on them so those are just again really loose ways to tell uh, goats have a hundred and fifty day gestation period so um, you kind of like if you know exactly the day that they get pregnant then you have a good idea of when they're gonna have babies but you know again like humans it's not perfectly exact so it could be a few days before a few days after so you kind of have to just keep an eye on it. And so I know that most of mine are due around this time. So that's why I'm checking now. Again, it's kind of timing who's already had babies in the spring and who hasn't because we kind of mix it up where half of them have them in the spring, half of them hopefully have them before Christmas. But just to make it easier to manage because otherwise that's a lot of babies all at once. I miss Brigida. Brigida looks like she's not quite ready. She usually bags up for me, but she she is one of the few I can usually tell because we just have a connection, I guess, one could say. There is one little white one there. Whew, we thought we were going to lose it. We got hit with some barber pole this year. And I have been treating him for probably two months just keeping an eye on him. And I thought I was going to lose him about two times. But I think we have gotten through it. I'm just keeping an eye on him. So yeah, I don't see any babies out here. So that's good. Oh, I keep popping my head out most of the day and it's a cold day, then I'll, I'll grab them mid-labor and bring them inside so they have a warm place to go. But if it's a nice warm day like this, I mean, it's not super hot, but it's nice, then I let them have it out here unless they're in distress. Because then that way, you know, they have, they have it here, the mess stays out here, and then I can bring them in, and they're more relaxed because they have all their buddies around them. And these guys are used to birds, so they don't, no one else gets too worried about anything. They just go about their business. So now they're eating their hay. They're mad at me because they want to go out, but my dog is wants to be with me, so he's scaring everybody. But they'll go out, but they'll be okay if I give them one more day, or if I have time. Like I said, I have to do some videos and run to town for Poshmark, which I can. Which, by the way, if anyone's interested, I've done Poshmark and eBay to sell old clothes on, and I'm thinking about trying Depop. Too. So I'd be certainly happy to do a video about my experiences because I do have 
distinct opinions. Yeah, there they are. I don't see any babies. So I'll leave it here, but we'll just keep an eye. This is a great day. Another reason why it's nice to keep them in every so often, because I can kind of keep an eye on ones that, that I've kind of noticed off to the side, and then that way I treat them with what they need and make sure they're happy and healthy. I just threw out some baking soda yesterday. I'll probably get some more because it seems like they enjoyed that. So I'll do that. I need to pick up some more minerals. <laughs> And then, of course, stock up on grain and shaving. So, like I said, at some point, probably, uh, probably tomorrow, realistically, um, I'll I'll start separating these guys. Let all the boys out. Let any of the mamas, I can, the younger ones, and any of the mamas that I know for sure aren't pregnant, I'll let them out, and they can go back out in the fields. And then I'll let anybody who's had babies and all the mamas to be they'll have access to this two acre pen so that means the ones that are the mamas that just have babies that are kind of confined to the mama room that'll be a two three days gives them a chance to kind of bond and rest and recoup and then they can come out here with the rest of the ladies and not be bothered by boys because um, we want to give them a good good recovery and keep them away from the boys and such because we don't want them to go pregnant right away um, so they'll get separated from the boys, the ones that have the babies, and they get a break. And so what happened is I will let them have access to this space and during the day and close it up. And at night, I'll move all the mamas into the smaller confined space here. Um, just close that off. They'll still be able to see everybody, but they'll be separated and their babies can have a safe place. And then everybody else will get this space, which is why it was kind of important to get these sheds at least workable again. They're not pretty. I have to, I'm waiting for I have to order some replacement roof it's there. So, and I probably put one on there too. So, of course, they don't look pretty, but they will do. So, this will give them a space to stay at night. The ones that aren't pregnant, the boys and the moms that aren't pregnant, the little ones, and then, and by little ones I mean teenager ones, not ones that need more anymore. And then the one mamas to be and all that will get space, but then they'll have access to grass during the day. And there you go. That's the story. Morning glory. And I will keep you posted.